Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're gonna to be talking about the trap is set. Today was an interesting day if you lost money in the market. Well, let's figure out why together we lost money in the market. And if you're still waiting for a short opportunity, well, we still gotta be waiting, but it's coming soon, guys. Don't worry, I promise you, it's coming soon. So again, like I said in the beginning of the video, why did we lose money? Emphasis on the we. I did close out my short position for a loss today. As you guys know, I'm transparent with you about all the trades that I take. And well, let's analyze why. Well, one, the market, when it opened, it opened up pretty strong and was pushing. So I thought, okay, break above the line. Then I said the line in the sand and I'm above that line and not fading. So therefore, hey i need to get out of this and gdp came in better than expected let's just jump over to that real quick and as we can see here gdp came in at 5.2 percent expected was 4.9 and then 2.1 was previous quarter gdp sales came in better than expected and also the thing that is scaring me for pc in the bearish fashion is core pc prices as you can see here it came in lower than people were expecting and real consumer spending came in lower so you have a cooling of the economy signs of cooling of the economy means that for tomorrow if we jump over to pce expectations as we can see here we're 3.1 versus 3.4 3.7 versus 3.5 so i could honestly see a 3.0 on pce year over year meaning the markets would probably take that as a bullish run. That's not a guarantee. However, we are still in this range bound area, which if the bulls step up to the plate tomorrow and break us through this range, I do think we see continuation going into Friday. One of the things I noted on the previous video is this volume divergence as price is going up. We see that it's an area where price and volume trend together. Usually when you have stagnation, you kind of have this sideways action right here, which we're getting. However, if you see on this latest push, if I zoom out for all of you, we had this massive push in the market and then a decrease here on the volume. That means that there's a volume divergence. Usually volume reinforces price and vice versa. Whereas in stagnation, that you don't really have a lot of price action. So we're seeing incorrect here, but correct here. So again, all those things mean that we are either faking out this move or we are going to head lower or higher, depending on where we break out of this range. I personally think it's going to be lower just because of the price action I saw today. If we jump over the NASDAQ real quick, as we can see here, NASDAQ has a failed breakout. We, this is classified by breaking the range of the week, but failing to hold it. So we see the range for the previous weeks was 393.07. The high of the day was 394.14. So broke above it, failed to hold it, broke down. Okay, well, now we need piece number two. We need to break 386.05. And on the S&P, we need to break 450 on the S&P, which is going to be 450.52 to be exact. We got a little bit to go there. Now, we got the catalyst for tomorrow. If PC comes in worse than expected in the sense of instead of us getting, let's say, 3.1, we get 3.2, 3.3, 3.6 for core. Those are all gonna signify that the Fed has more to do and that cuts are not coming anytime soon and a possible rate hike gets put back on the table. One of the interesting things that happened today, which we'll quickly go over in a second, is about yields. But going into PCE, we need to see the reaction and its reaction to the levels of the day. Right now we're sitting around 454 for the S&P respectively, and the NASDAQ was 389. 81. Now, I did mention, we got to take a look at the Russell. The Russell was a key player today. And I did say that we need to close above 180. If you guys rewind the tape, I said Russell has to close above 180. Today, we shot up right double topping. I mean, this was the most beautiful double top in existence. As you can see here, first top, second top. It's just classic bear pattern. Failed breakout, double top reject off the 200 weekly, fail to hold any of the moving averages. It's a bull's wet dream, as one could say. 
However, we have to close now below 176.91, and we probably would continue that move all the way through this gap fill, probably down to the 169 level. So you guys got your lines in the sand for tomorrow, and you are ready and empowered to make that move tomorrow. It's pretty simple. PC reaction, where are we at with the levels? Take trade. That's as simple as it's going to be for me tomorrow. If we see momentum to the downside, I'm taking that trade. If I see momentum to the upside, I'm taking that trade as well. I'm not going to be partial to one team or another. Again, more evidence that VIX is coming to rip all your faces off if you are a bull in the market. Now, I did also say in the beginning of the video for all you bulls that I think PC could come in better than expected. So don't tell me I'm not playing both sides. I'm playing both sides and I'm giving each of you a piece. However, if I look at the broader market and signals are telling me, I say selling. I see selling pressure on the horizon. I could be proven wrong. Guess what? I was proven wrong today. I closed my position. I could have not closed my position and still made money. But guess what? I follow my rules. That's the principles of trading. So as we can see here, VIX is hovering around the 1298 level. That $12.80 level, 8890 level, is been a crucial point it's where vix quadruple bottomed that significant support for fear and people really weren't excited to buy the s p on top of if we jump over to the net speculative positions for this week um it came out on monday as you can see here eighty thousand previously 52 we are significantly back and in a territory where there could very easily initiate a short squeeze. However, this is where I have a problem with that statement. When we were at close to half a million in those positions, we were up here. So again, that area of the chart, we were up at these highs in this range consolidation, we weren't really down at these lows. That's not to say we can't break them, However, I would like to see VIX actually break this level significantly with momentum to say, hey, we're coming back down to the 10s, 9s, 8s. And trust me, you don't want that market down there because it was stale as all you know what to trade in. You want some volatility in the market so you guys can make option premium and all the good stuff out there, have the volatility and not sit on a trade for all eternity. It was a pretty boring market when VIX was down here. But before I digress, let's just take a look at RSP. RSP actually showing some hope by two cents. So it did have a weekly higher high and it is truly broken out of that range. Now, the candle is a hanging man candle or a spinning top or morning star, whatever you wanna call it and they're all bearish patterns. So following the sentiment of IWM, S&P, NASDAQ, I wanna see where this goes. And I think that small caps really held the market up pretty well today. If we take a look at some of the bigger names like the Apples, the Microsofts, the Amazons, they really didn't do so well. Google having a sharp move down today. NVIDIA kind of just consolidating around this 482 level. I know one of our viewers wanted to short NVIDIA, so is Michael Burry. So let's take a look at SOXX, which is the ETF for semis. Kind of staying range bound in this area. Nothing really too notable and no sector was really down, except there was one thing. Bonds are shooting up like no tomorrow. And that is truly surprising considering that there is not a lot of excitement in the bond market. This is essentially the bond market pricing in no more Fed hikes and or a recession. Longer term bonds are basically going up, aka their yields are going down. However, short term debt is still staying relatively calm in the sense of what their yields are. If we go to the two year, we can see here significant move down, especially after a lot of these reports, the 20 and the 30 moving down sharply with it. And therefore, I apologize for that. Therefore, we see the yield curve is starting to kind of just say meh. That's what it's been doing. So again, the yield curve is still inverted. It's still at a level that is dangerous for us. We are heading towards my theory with no sign of an inversion. So my theory is probably going to be wrong and it's gonna be catastrophically worse for us when this thing 
uninverts inevitably. But as you can see here, people are taking a lower premium for their longer term bonds because they expect something to break. You would not be expecting this movement when the Fed is saying that they may hike, they may not. They haven't really signaled truly. Everyone believes that the hiking cycle is the end. This is the pivot. The rate cuts are coming in the horizon. However, all it takes is Jerome Powell coming out and saying, I don't see cuts for another year or two. And this thing will immediately go back to 5%. The two year will skyrocket like no tomorrow. And well, it's gonna be an interesting time for those that said we back here that when the Fed was done, look what happened after. So again, that can happen here. Don't count anything out. And if we go to the reverse repo, $867 billion. So we're kind of even in this stagnation period right here. As we can see here, it forms uh, troughs and basically uh, drops, settles out, drops. So I do expect this to kind of just go sideways. And as you can see here, it just updated to $914 billion. So ticking up in the reverse repo as expected when yields are dropping. So this could slow the bleeding of government debt and take this facility a little bit longer than we initially expected. However, I will keep you guys updated on that as things develop. And last but not least, let's take a look at fear and greed. Not really moving the needle anywhere. Still greedy territory. That's why I'm saying we do have the bear fuel to push us higher. However, we also have the bear fuel and the bull fuel to push us lower. So we have to keep that in mind. And again, PC comes out tomorrow. So it's going to be an interesting time at best to see what happens tomorrow. We'll definitely keep you guys updated. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button on the way out. It really helps the YouTube algorithm and possibly consider subscribing to the channel. We do daily uploads of various kinds, fundamental and technical, where you can kind of see two sides of the coin. And again, thank you very much. And I hope to see you in the next video.